Hi everybody, my name is Ramella, PhD student from Politecnico di Milano, and in this presentation I'll discuss a paper entitled the Applicability Assessment for in Silico Patient Specific TVAR Procedures that was published in the Journal of Biomechanics. In the recent literature and regulatory body publications, strong emphasis is given to the role of credibility of a computational model, when the credibility can be defined as the capability of a numerical model to address a given question of interest. A relevant aspect of the credibility assessment is the applicability analysis, defined as the use of a computational model in the specific context of use supported by validation evidence. In this context, in 2017, a work by the FDA group describes some steps to be followed for developing the applicability analysis. Following this work, the paper I'm presenting is focused on the discussion of the applicability of patient-specific in silico TVAR simulations to replicate the stent graft implantation. Briefly, the thoracic and the vascular aortic repair is a minimal invasive technique that is used to treat thoracic aortic pathologies to, uh, and consists of inserting a self-expandable stent graft into the aortic lumen. These are the three main steps of the applicability assessment. The first one consists of describing the key player of the analysis. On one side, there is the real-world scenario, and on the other, the numerical models. Among them, we define the context of use, both in the real and the model, and the primary validation evidence, which support the use of the numerical model, together with their equalities and differences. The real world of the context of use is the TVAR procedure performed in the clinical settings. And on the model side, we have the patient-specific numerical simulation. The real validation evidence is instead the stand graft implantation into a rigid model. This uh, validation was uh, um, the model of the validation evidence was uh, uh, already published in uh, our recent work. The second step consists of describing the qualities and differences uh, between the reality and the models. The identical aspects in the model, uh, on the model side are related to the stand graph discretization technique and material properties, the step of the simulations, and the question of interest. While while on the other side, differences are related to the aortic anatomy, to the kind of material and discretization technique of the aorta, to the stand graft size, and to the landing zone uh, of the implanted stand graft. Switching from the model to the real environmental settings, differences are related to the aortic anatomy and materials, to the stand graft model, to the um, TVAR procedure itself, and to the uh, presence or absence of the blood flow. So given this, the key question of the applicability assessment is, since we assume that it is appropriate to model the real validation with the day validation models, is then appropriate to use a specific model of the context of use to predict the reality of the context of use given the difference, differences that I explained before? So focusing on the reality and the models of the primary validation evidence, you can see that um, in the model we have reached a good agreement uh, uh, comparing the, uh, the model itself with the uh, reality uh, of the experiment. So comparing the simulation results in red with the results of the CT uh, segmentation in, um, in gray. Therefore, as in the model of the context of use, uh, we are going to use the same discretization technique for the stand graft and the same material properties and the, uh, the same steps to replicate the TVAR procedure. We can also say that this, uh, uh, this methodology can be applicable also to um, replicate uh, the stand graft implantation into patient-specific anatomy, so replicating a real uh, scenario. And as a support to this, uh, and as a demonstration of the capability to apply this validated methodology to patient-specific anatomies, we have carried out a pilot patient-specific study comparing the simulation results with post-operative CT images uh, reconstructions, as you see, and you see the results uh, in this slide. Okay, so this is my last slide. I would like to thank all uh, the co-authors of this paper, the European Society of Biomechanics, for uh, the opportunity of presenting this work and you all for the attention.